Okay, uh, enough waiting. Um, let me start off. Where should we start off? Let's start off in India and Pakistan. Uh, just to say that the Secretary General is encouraged by the joint statement issued by the militaries of India and Pakistan on their agreement to observing the ceasefire at the line of control in Kashmir and engaging through established mechanisms. He hopes that this positive step will provide an opportunity for further dialogue. <clears throat> and I have a statement on the Special Tribunal for Lebanon, which I think uh, James asked about yesterday. Uh, the Secretary General has extended the mandate of the Special Tribunal for Lebanon from March 1st, 2021 for a further two years, or until completion of the cases that are before the Special Tribunal, if sooner, or the exhaustion of available funds, if sooner. The extension is in accordance with Security Council Resolution 1757. Within the indicated two-year period, it is anticipated that the Special Tribunal for Lebanon will progressively draw down its activities as a judicial work before the different chambers is completed. The Secretary General reaffirms the commitment of the UN to support the work of the Tribunal in the fight against impunity for major crimes in order to bring those responsible to justice. The United Nations looks forward to the completion of the mandate of the Special Tribunal in a timely manner. The full statement uh, is being shared with you as we speak. And in a um, statement we issued uh, last night, you will have seen that following consultations consulted conducted, excuse me, on behalf of the Secretary General by Jane Hall Lut, uh, that cons consultations over the past several months. The Secretary General intends to convene an informal 5 plus 1 meeting of Cyprus on the Cyprus issue in Geneva from the 27th to the 29th of April 2021. For the purposes of the meeting, uh, will be to determine whether the common ground exists for the parties to negotiate a lasting solution to the Cyprus problem within the foreseeable horizon. And in a joint statement issued this morning, we, along with our partners at the Economic Commission for West African States, otherwise known as ECOWAS, have taken note of the provisional results of the second round of the presidential election announced by the Independent National Electoral Commission of Niger. We congratulate the people of Niger for the great mobilization and peaceful participation in the presidential ballot. But we strongly condemn the acts of violence that occurred following the announcement of the provisional results. In this context, everyone should exercise restraint. The, we, along with ECOWAS, invite all stakeholders to comply with the legal provisions that guarantee the peaceful conduct of the electoral process, in particular those relating to the settling of electoral disputes. We stand ready to support the people of Niger in their efforts to consolidate peace and democracy. And I can add, of course, the Secretary General is following the situation very closely. He calls on all candidates and their supporters to maintain the exemplary conduct that prevailed during the election and to allow the electoral process to conclude in a peaceful manner, urging all parties to resolve any election-related disputes through dialogue and appropriate legal channels. Uh, today, in the Virtual Security Council, Emergency Relief Coordinator Mark Lowcock briefed members on Syria. He focused on three points, the economic crisis, the rise of food insecurity, humanitarian access, and the protection of civilians. Mr. Lowcock said around 60% of the Syrian population, that's 12.4 million people, do not have a, a regular access to safe and nutritious food. That's according to data from the World Food Program. An additional 4.5 million people have fallen into this category over the past year. On access, he said their failure to extend the cross-border authorizations to bring humanitarian in assistance through northwest Syria would trigger suffering and the loss of life on a massive scale. He said the UN is continuing its efforts to conduct first, uh, first cross-line mission into northwest Syria. The aim is not to have a one-off mission, he added, but to have regular uh, line cross-line missions that complement the ongoing cross-border operation. And he noted that an increase of horrific bombings have killed dozens of civilians and injured many more in northern Syria in recent months. And on Myanmar, uh, just to say that we are deeply concerned that an increasing number of people 
are now being held in detention. Uh, the UN country team on the ground says at least 150 people were detained in protest in Naypyidaw on February 22nd, and that's in Naypyidaw alone. Uh, the UN team is currently tracking more than 900 political and state officials, activists, and civil society members, including journalists, monks, and students, who are now being detained. And we, of course, call for their immediate release. And as a reminder, the um, Special Envoy, Secretary General Special Envoy on uh, Myanmar, uh, will be briefing the General Assembly uh, tomorrow. Turning to Sudan, the acting humanitarian coordinator in that country, Axel Bishop, recently visited West Darfur. He met there with some 170, he met, excuse me, he met with some of the 170,000 people who were displaced by intercommunal violence last month. Mr. Bishop also held talks with community leaders, the governor of West Darfur, and relief organizations. We and our partners have provided one month's worth of food rations as well as water and sanitation services to more than 70,000 displaced people in, uh, near Janaina. Uh, more aid will be delivered this week. The efforts are part of the overall $1.9 billion humanitarian response plan for the state, for all of Sudan, which aims to help almost 9 million people in need. Few COVID notes, uh, an update from Malaysia, which started COVID-19 vaccination program yesterday. The UN team led by the resident coordinator, Stefan Preisner, has been supporting authorities with this program. The first phase targets uh, frontline workers, including those working in healthcare, essential services, defense and security. More than half a million people have been registered to receive the vaccine. Malaysia vaccination plans aims to reach 80%, or that's 24 million, uh, adults by March of next year. Are we in 2021 or 22? 21. Okay, so by March of 2022, next year. The UN team has helped uh, Malaysia join the COVAX facility to expand vaccination and to include non-nationals, including refugees and undocumented people. The UN agencies are working with authorities to begin vaccinating people in those groups. We also help plan, prepare, and assess procure vaccines through COVAX and other channels, including supporting logistical distribution. The entire UN team has worked on risk communications and community engagement. Um, and also on uh, vaccines, uh, UNICEF announced today that it has signed a long-term agreement with AstraZeneca to supply vaccines for the COVAX uh, facility. UNICEF and its partners will now have access to up to 170 million doses for, of vaccines for some 85 countries. This is a third such agreement for vaccines following previously announced agreements with Pfizer and the Serum Institute of India. It is planned to have the vaccines delivered in the first quarter of this year. And uh, the World Health Organization today announced the launch of a COVID-19 oxygen emergency task force. It will bring together key organizations working on oxygen access. WHO warned that since the start of the pandemic, affordable and sustainable access to oxygen has been growing, um, growing challenge in low and middle income countries. It is estimated that more than half a million people in these countries currently need 1.1 million cylinders of oxygen per day. The task force has determined an immediate funding need of 90 million to address key challenges in oxygen access and delivery up to 20 countries. The urgent short-term requirements of additional countries will be measured and costed in the coming weeks with the overall funding need over the 12 months estimated to be 1.6 billion, a figure that was, will be regularly reviewed by the task force. Senior personnel appointment. Uh, today, the Secretary General is appointing Ms. Lydia Noronha of India as head of the New York Office of the UN Environment Program. This is at the Assistant Secretary General level. She will succeed Satya Tripathi of India, to whom the Secretary General is grateful for his leadership and dedicated service during his tenure. Uh, Ms. Noronha is an economist with over 30 years of international experience in the field of sustainable development. She has worked since 2014 as director of UNEP's Econo Economy Division, based in Nairobi, leading UNEP's work on climate mitigation and er energy transitions, green economies, sustainable consumption and production, as well as many other uh, pertinent issues. More information online. And this will come as a surprise to you at 3 p.m. this afternoon. Uh, Ambassador Linda Thomas-Greenfield, the new U.S. Permanent Representative, will speak at the stakeout. She is also presenting her credentials to the Secretary General, I think, around 
2 o'clock. Uh, and we always try to end on a good note. We say thank you to our friends in Tirana and Ashgabat as Albania and Turkmenistan have paid us, Celia. Thank you, Stefan. About South Sudan, uh, I heard that uh, due to a lot of COVID cases, the Juba is on lockdown. Does it? apply for the mission, and can the mission people continue to do their work? Um, we are, let me check on what our numbers are on, uh, on South Sudan. We obviously are continuing and have continued to do our work in peacekeeping operations uh, despite uh, the COVID situation. Uh, whenever there are contingents of personnel that are uh, infected, we take the necessary uh, safety measures. Um, um, sorry, James. Uh, yes, I have two follow-ups to things you read out and then a question. Uh, let's do the follow-ups first. Um, I don't have the statement on the STL yet, so I might be asking a question that's answered in the statement. But what was, on, on the special tribunal on Lebanon, what was the, um, the way the funding problem has been dealt with? Uh, I will have to get back to you on the funding issue. I should have had... I, was thinking I should have had that information as I was speaking. Okay, and then the second one is on Cyprus. Mm -hmm. um, so you say work out whether the, the, there can be a solution in the foreseeable future. Um, would you describe these as crunch talks and as the UN, if you don't get anywhere this time, you're giving up? Uh, we're not in the business of doing, uh, of doing ultimatums as if we don't get, if we don't will give up if something doesn't happen. I mean, I think if you look at the ebb and flow of our efforts on Cyprus, um, there have been ebbs and there have been flows. Um, Miss uh, Jane Holud has been consulting with the parties. We think this is an opportune time. It's an informal meeting. And uh, we very much hope that there will be a positive outcome. And the new question is on Armenia, where, as you know, there is a very tense situation and the prime minister S suggesting that uh, the, the army has been threatening a coup attempt against him. Does the UN have any reaction to that? Sure. I mean, what we're seeing in, uh, in Armenia is of great concern to us. Uh, it's very important that all parties remain calm. We urge uh, restraint. We also encourage an inclusive dialogue uh, to de-escalate tensions and address political differences. And that needs to be done with full respect for the Constitution and the democratic process. Uh, Edie, and then Michelle, and then Toby. Oh, thank you, Steph. Um, just to echo uh, what James asked for about the funding on the Lebanon Tribunal, which has been voluntary. Right. right. I, my, my understanding uh, is that it's still, it still has funds to operate on. We'll try to get you a more precise figure. OK. Um, my, my question is um, also um, on uh, Myanmar, on um, SRSG, Shrano Bergena. What's the status of her efforts and UN efforts to get her into Myanmar? Ongoing. Uh, she's continuing her, her contacts. The, the Secretary General has been on the phone uh, with, uh, with people. Um, you know, her goal is obviously uh, to get there, but I think more, more importantly to ensure uh, that there is respect for the outcome of the elections in November, that the will of the people of Myanmar is expressed democratically uh, be respected, and that their fundamental rights uh, is is respected. I think it's important for the international community to remain united uh, and for to remain in close contact with political actors, civil society, uh, and to ensure that the people of Myanmar are able to um, to have their voices heard and their rights respected. What reason has sh has the uh, military government given her for not? allowing her back into the country. Uh, I'm not going to go into what they're saying. What is clear is that she's not been able to secure uh, 
to secure travels to Myanmar. Michelle, then Toby. Thanks, Steph. Just a quick follow-up first on an issue that we raised a couple of months ago now, I think. Any update on the investigation into the accusations against Fabrizio Hostchild? No, uh, as we've been saying the uh, the work of the of OIOS is continuing. Uh, I think uh, for everyone involved, uh, it will be done as speedily and as thoroughly as possible. And what's his work status at the moment? He remains uh, on um, he remains on leave with it, with pay. Um, and another question on Tigray. Um, my colleagues have seen some satellite imagery that shows five hundred. <coughs> Fires that appear to have been deliberately set have destroyed around 500 structures um, this week in a town in northern Tigray. Does the UN have any information or reaction? No, I mean, we have no, uh, I have no information on that. Part of the, the, the problem, as we've been expressing, is the lack of uh, unfettered access. Um, this is something also the High Commission for Human Rights has expressed following various reports of uh, troubling reports of human rights violations. I think the, the, the faster we can get in there to deliver humanitarian aid, uh, the better, and also to uh, working with uh, the authorities and the government to investigate um, what are concerning reports. Toby. Sorry about that. Thanks, Steph. Um, my question is, uh, in light of the visit today by the new U.S. ambassador who's presenting her credentials, um, is there any more uh, specificity that you can give on, on what you think the U.S. nationally determined contribution uh, should be regarding the Paris Agreement? And you probably can't, can't be too specific there, but can you remind us what the uh, Secretary General is looking to the major emitters um, in terms of their, uh, their NDCs. Thank you. We're, we're looking for uh, boldness. We're looking for courage. Uh, we're looking for uh, nationally determined goals that will lead us uh, to a carbon-free uh, carbon world by mid-century. Uh, and I think the, 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 the return of, of the U.S. Uh, government uh, to, to Paris is a very important step. Now, obviously, we will, I can't speak to them and what they will, uh, they will come to, you know, what they will uh, deliver, uh, but I think we need, we need to show, the major emitters uh, need to show courage and need to be bold. Ray. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, like 10 years, around 10 years ago, uh, the conflict in Syria and Libya uh, started and uh, thanks to the UN efforts, there is some evolution in situation in Libya. However, in Syria, it's still the situation getting uh, bad and worse. Um, today, there was a Security Council about the humanitarian situation. Uh, for the UN, why it's still this conflict uh, uh, going on and developing? Well, it's it's ongoing because there's been uh, we've not been I mean there's not been able to to find a we've not been able to the, the let me repeat that the, the it is ongoing because those involved in the conflict have not been able uh, to agree to a political solution I mean there is no military solution to what is going on right the only thing that is going on is the increase um, the increased suffering of the people. Uh, and I think if you look at uh, in Mr. Pedersen's efforts, uh, I think he stated very openly his disappointment following the last meeting of the Constitutional uh, Committee. Um, what we need now is credible engagement uh, by the, all those involved politically into, uh, this, uh, into the political process. And also, uh, the new Syrian ambassador to the Security Council uh, mentioned this morning that uh, in some parts of uh, Syria, uh, the Turkish presence uh, there uh, are forcing the population to use the Turkish lira. Uh, don't you think it's a kind of uh, occupation? Look, uh, I think what we have, I, I don't have details of what is going on in, the, in that area. Uh, what we have always called for is for the respect for the integrity of Syria uh, by all countries, whether in the region or beyond. Okay, uh, Iftikhar. Uh, 
Thank you, Steph. Uh, about Secretary General's statement uh, on India-Pakistan ceasefire along line of control in the disputed Kashmir region, does the Secretary General plan to talk to the leaders of the two countries to hold dialogue to start the process for resolving the Kashmir dispute? Uh, there's no plan that I'm aware of, but the Secretary General is always available uh, for his good offices in, in any, uh, between any member states who would request it. Okay, uh, uh, Abdel Hamid. Uh, thank you, Stefan. Uh, Associated this today disclosed that Israel has built a grand facility near Dimona nuclear uh, plant the size of a uh, football uh, field with a uh, number of floorboards. It hasn't been disclosed before. So my first question, do you have any comment on that? No, I have, I've seen the press reports. I have no, uh, I have no comment because I have no, no way of verifying the veracity of those reports. And your second question? My second question is about Sudan. Today, Sudan said that they are insisting that the mediation between the of Sudan and Egypt is to be enlarged, including the United Nations. Have you received any correspondence, official correspondence? So I didn't. I, I didn't hear the. I didn't hear what. I didn't hear what is the letter about. About expanding the mediation and the Ethiopian Sudanese Egyptian conflict to include the United Nations. Well, I mean, uh, on uh, concerning con concerning the dam, you mean? Uh, I I will check. We have always uh, supported a negotiated solution, uh, and also supported the African Union's effort to reach that solution. Okay, um, James. Uh, yes, can I just? I know we ask this nearly every day, but is there an update on the advance mission? to Libya, and if you, you're shaking your head, if there, if there is likely to be news in the coming days, can we make sure, can we ask, request that there's a statement even if the yeah. team arrives at the weekend? Okay, will do. All right, uh, I see Brendan appear on the screen as if by magic. Um, say something and I will wave. Something. 